Hey everybody, this is Paul. Welcome back to part four in creating the hash table project. So I know it's been probably about a month and a half since I uh, worked in this uh, hash table project series here, but I've been incredibly busy and uh, I just haven't had time. But I've got a lot of time this weekend, so I should be able to go ahead and finish this uh, project for you guys. But anyway, I was looking at some of the stuff I did um, in the first few parts, and I just want to change a little little bit of what I did. And so what I want to change is the way I'm defining this table size right here. So in our hash.cpp file, um, right now we're defining the table size in our constructor. And what I want to do is I just want to get rid of that. So I'm just going to delete that. And then in our hash.h file, um, inside of our class definition, I'm going to change this from int to static const int. So I'm just going to type in static const int table size. And uh, what this is going to do is it's basically just going to allow me to define the size of the table inside of the class definition and then use it right away. So that's why I want to do this here. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to give it a initial size of 10. So before we, were, we had a size of 100 for uh, the previous examples, but now I want to start displaying some of the stuff to the screen. So I think it will make more sense to have a smaller table size just for illustrative purposes so you guys can see what's happening. So the next thing we want to do is we want to define the types of things that we want to store in our hash table. So I'm going to call these things items. So we'll just call it item actually. And the way we're going to define an item is we're going to create a struct. And so we're naming our struct item. And then we're going to do opening and closing curly brace, end it with a semicolon. And then everything inside of these two curly braces here is going to be what the item consists of. So it's going to consist of two strings and one pointer. So the first string is basically going to be a name of a person. And the second string is going to be that person's favorite drink. And then the third thing is an item pointer, and it just has the ability to point to some other item. So every time we type in the word item now, the program knows that we're talking about some object that contains a name, it contains a drink, and it has the ability to point to some other item. So that's what an item is going to look like in our program. And so now that we've defined what this item looks like, we're going to use that definition to create the core of our hash table. So what I want our hash table to do is I basically just want the initial, the initial indexes or the initial buckets. I guess we should be calling these indexes buckets since that's the proper term when we're talking about hash tables. I've been talking about indexes in the last few tutorials, which is really what we have. But for whatever reason, people decided that they wanted to call the index elements of a hash table a bucket. So I'll use the word index, use the word bucket kind of interchangeably probably in the next few tutorials, but they, they pretty much mean the same thing. So anyway, let's go ahead and create this hash table. And the hash table is just going to contain a bunch of pointers, and those pointers have the ability to point to some item object. And so we're going to name this hash table hash table. That makes sense. And we're going to give it a size of whatever our table size is. So we have defined up here the table size to be 10. So if I was to change this to 50, then our table size would be 50. Our hash table would have 50 indexes or 50 buckets, whichever way you want to think about it. So what we've done here, we've basically defined what an item looks like and what it contains. And then we've defined the, the core of our hash table. It's really just an array with table size amount of buckets, and table size happens to be 10 right now, so has 10 buckets, and each of those buckets contains a pointer that has the ability to point to some item. So anyway, I think that's probably a good place to stop this tutorial, and uh, we'll continue creating this hash table project in part five, so stay tuned for that. You guys have an excellent day, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.